everyone, so today I'm going to be explaining everything that I did to get an A star in A level chemistry and therefore hopefully help you get one too. Alongside that I'm going to be giving a little bit of insight into my own experience and therefore hopefully help you choose if chemistry is right for you as well. I can say from my own experience that I found there to be a huge difference from year 12 to year 13, it's just like the content completely flipped, completely changed and got so much harder. So when you start organic chemistry in year 13 you may be feeling stressed, that is totally normally but honestly once you let it sink in and you start to revise it a bit more and it instantly begins to stick in your head a bit more you will find it come together so don't panic too much if it isn't coming together straight away the first month of year 12 will also be like a recap of GCSE so it's not really a good insight at that point as to whether you would be suited to it or not you are expected to know things from GCSE that won't be covered again after GCSE it's basically just considered common sense like the color of carbon and stuff but you will need to know it you could get a hundred percent a star full marks in A-level chemistry and still get a fail in the experiments. It's a totally separate qualification. So if that's a deciding factor, it really doesn't matter. The CGP textbooks had not been released when I was in year 12, but they have been released now and I would advise getting one. These are the revision guides that I'm talking about. It explains things really clearly, especially with experiments. It makes it really clear for those exam questions, which may not be explained very well in your lesson. And it also has some really good exam style questions at the bottom with the answers in the back. So you can work through those if you need to, but I would advise going through actual past papers before that. And likewise for the workbook, I would advise going through as many questions as possible because they are exam style, but I didn't actually manage to finish all of it as you may be able to see. So it's absolutely not a priority, but do it if you want to. So the video I made on how to defeat fussy mark schemes was mainly aimed at A-level biology, but I do also explain in that how to make effective revision resources and not waste your time. So please check that video out because it explains it better than I can right now. But that method of making notes also applies to A-level chemistry and this is so important. So basically after a lesson, take that time Time to add in extra content that's not been covered in lesson from your exam board textbook as well as the CGP revision guide and things from the mark schemes after completing homework to make sure you don't miss any content but if your homeworks are not past paper questions you do need to be setting yourself past paper questions so you can get into that mindset of an examiner more which will make it so much easier to answer questions and identify key points that they're looking for don't make flashcards straight from the lessons make it after you've done all of that extra work looking at the textbooks and stuff but do make sure you make them don't leave it till last minute it but you do need to make sure obviously you've looked at everything first and then make your flashcards whether that's physical or check or quizlet it doesn't matter just make sure you have something so it's not all rushed at the last minute actual revision methods include flashcards post-it notes mind maps songs blurting past papers baseline marks everything like that that you would use for every other subject also applies to chemistry although i will show you my revision folder and straight away I have my key points summary, just a list of the key facts that I needed to go in and look at just before the exam to make sure I didn't forget. There you go, there's another one. And then I just have all of these mind maps. I found these really helpful to help me retain the information as I was making them, just from the muscle memory of doing it. I don't make them to read them again. Maths questions that were particularly difficult, I just wrote them up so I could see exactly how it was done just before the exam. Likewise, for any other questions that I got wrong in mocks, I just wrote the question again so I could see it just before the exam. So anything you're struggling with, just make sure you write it up. And then I just thought I'd show you a little bit of my actual non-organic folder. So this is the periodic table that I use to try and learn everything at the start when I first started chemistry. And I can see really clearly where the elements cross the line. I've got a list of all of the definitions. So you can see in here where I've added in extra things from my textbook that weren't taught in the lesson highlighted key points. And then again, just like in my non-organic folder, I've got a list of all of the organic definitions. I've also used colour to try and make it a little bit more interesting throughout. My teacher gave me this and I actually did use it quite a bit when I was originally trying to learn all of those equations. I would just fold the edges over, look at it, if I can answer it, see if the answer's right, turn it back over again, and vice versa, try and get those equations learned. But I also would advise other things before this, like flashcards and blurting. And then this is where I kept all of my revision flashcards. Really important to make sure you learn diagrams as well because you'll think you'll know this and then you'll just forget it. So make sure Sure to go through them. So I always have the proper line flashcards for the long explanation things of things that you have to learn just to make sure you know it word for word. Even little things need to go on flashcards like this. What is the formula of ammonium? It's a basic thing. If you forget it, you will struggle. So you have to make sure you know all your basics as well as all of the long explanations. Make sure you're dividing them into piles of 100% know it, know a little bit, and don't know at all. So then you can keep going through them until you've got a full pile of 100% know it. So just like biology for chemistry as well, I just use one of these. Got the different subjects in and basically just separates into homeworks, past papers that I've done in my own time, baseline mocks and things like that. And then actual mocks and future mocks. 
This is actually something I'd like to point out as well. I actually found it really difficult to sort of organise things in chemistry because I'd organised things into AS and A2 and then it didn't really work like that for the actual exam papers because it was more organic and non-organic so if you can try and identify which is organic and which is non-organic that will make it easier for you to organize from the start so don't make that mistake chemistry the grade boundaries are so high maths is about 50 percent biology is about 60 percent and then chemistry jumps all the way up to 90 percent it is a high grade boundary you are going to have to be prepared to work hard to try and get everything right. In year 13 when you start learning organic chemistry you may find that all of the organic equations it seems like a lot to learn at once and trust me it is it can be very confusing but blurting is the best way to get to grips with it. Just spend 20 minutes a day trying to get through these equations, flashcard it, post-it notes, just put random ones on post-it notes and the more you familiarise yourself with it the easier it will become and then once you get all of those basics down you can then work on the little things that you keep forgetting or the little things you struggle with. Check the specification make sure you know everything that you need to know write a list of questions that you always struggle with because with the amount of past papers and questions that you'll do you probably won't have time to go through it all before that exam make sure you cover all of the content again in those final 24 hours even if that means you need to cram even if it means you won't get a full eight hours sleep make sure you get through all of that content from my experience I struggled with chemistry more socially as in I didn't really like people that were in my class I couldn't get on with it I did not enjoy chemistry at all but content wise it was quite straight forward once we got past the year 13 organic chemistry bit because that was a huge step but honestly don't be put off by it every other student has also done that jump you will get there eventually if they can do it you can do it even if you look at the periodic table and think yeah i understand the sections i understand how it all works and everything draw it at least once anyway just to make sure you do because if you don't it will identify gaps in your knowledge and it's better to identify the gaps before the exams than in the exams. I mean draw it as in do the outline and then divide exactly where it is so then you know exactly which elements the lines are drawn at for the different sections. I'm not saying draw it as in writing every single element because you don't need to know every single element and you are going to be given a periodic table. I'm just saying make sure you know which elements are on the divider lines. In the exam, write on the data booklet if you need to. It is there, it is spare paper. You will not be given spare paper in the exam. You are not allowed spare paper in the exam, but there is nothing to stop you writing in the data sheet. So if you need it, do it. Do past papers. Even if you're just copying the answer straight from the mark scheme, it will help you get into the mindset of the examiner. Likewise, with biology, you should be doing baseline marks, which basically just means doing a past paper under time conditions without revising, because it will help you to identify what you don't solidly know. Even if you've done a past paper before, do it again. Just keep doing the same ones again and again. And if you have to, do the old spec, do the old spec before that. Just do as many questions as you can. Get extra time if you're entitled to. Most people are entitled to. Extra time is not going to hinder you it's just going to give you that extra leniency if you need it take mocks seriously if you revise for them it will be easier to revise for your real exams so just please take them seriously and revise for them as best as you can these exams are long they were the longest exams that i sat i think my longest one was like two hours and 50 minutes or something like that even though the exams are like two hours long most people still run out of time so get that extra time if you can take your time in the exam but also don't spend too long on a question because you don't want to run out of time get that experience doing the past paper question so you know how to pace yourself. So yes, all in all, chemistry was my least favourite, but I also don't regret taking it in the end. I missed the first five months of chemistry and I still managed to get an A star in it. So if I can do it, you can do it. Please believe in yourself. Thank you so much for watching guys and good luck with A-level chemistry. Bye.